what's going on guys, Core X Designs here and welcome to another 3D Studio Max tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to model grills in 3D Studio Max. So this was like a suggestion from uh, from one of my viewers on one of my videos and I'm really glad someone actually told me what to do because I was running out of ideas. So um, I have three methods uh, on how I model grills in my, in my projects and uh, so let's start right away and let's start with the easiest way and that is by creating a rhombus rib, a rhombus grill and the way you do this is just go ahead and create a plane so this is the simplest one let me tell you again and we go to the front viewport and we randomly create a plane here and we're also going to be putting it at 0 comma 0 comma 0 there we go and hit F4 here show the grid lines okay so um, what we need to do is uh, increase the number of segments on this thing so I'm just I usually do something like I don't know 50 by 50 and that's gonna make it really dense maybe 50 is too much we could do something like 40 by 40 okay and that way we just create a lot of segments in this uh, in this plane so next step is to go ahead and convert this into an editable poly and go into vertex mode and hit control A to select all vertices okay first thing let me go ahead and save this up somewhere Okay. So um, I have, I'm going to be taking this and I'm going to move down into chamfer. Click on this little box next to chamfer. And now you need to increase the chamfer amount until all you see are these rhombuses, rhombuses if, if, if that's a word. Um, so you started with rectangles, but you want to end up with rhombuses. And you can see how that works. And if you want, you can actually leave it this way. Uh, it's kind of cool with hexagons somewhere and rectangles and squares somewhere but uh, that's going to be like the third method of creating a grill so I'm going to be skipping that and go with pure pure rhombuses and I'm going to hit the tick button right here then we're okay next step is welding all of these vertices because as you can see you can see only the you can only see like this vertex but it's like actually not one it's actually two vertices as you can see there so uh, control Z and hit control A to select all these vertices and move down until you see weld and just go ahead and you know you don't need to change any settings you just need to weld them together so as you can see before there were 6560 uh, vertices and now they're exactly half so that's a good sign you hit the tick button right here and now as you can see these vertices are one which is pretty good so moving on to polygon mode I'm going to hit control A to select all these polygons and move down to inset <clears throat> and you want to change the inset type from group, which is going to be the default, to by polygon. Okay, and then you want to go ahead and increase the amount so that you can see that uh, we are getting somewhere. So you need to make sure that uh, we're going to be deleting all these red polygons. So treat red polygons as holes and blue polygons as, as the actual grill. So I think I'm going to stick with something like 0.5. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then all you need to do is hit the tick button right here and then hit delete. So as you can see, we have a grill, and it really looks really cool. So it actually looks kind of flat right now. So to make it look kind of more 3D, I'm going to go into border mode, and hit Control A to select all borders, and then holding down the Shift key, now this is really going to be really polygon heavy, I'm going to move this back somewhat. Okay, so this is really going to slow down my computer. Okay, so you can actually go ahead and pull this back as much as you want, and as you can see, we can get some really real 3D onto our, our grill. Now, if you want to change the size of this, um, there are two ways to actually do this. First thing is to, you know, oh, actually change the entire entire uh, control A, and just go ahead and change the entire size of this. Or the second way is to think before you actually do this and lower down the amount of segments. For example, we started by with 40 by 40. But if you want to, you know, some kind of smaller holes, you can increase the number of segments, something like 50 by 50. Or if you want larger holes, you can go with 60, or you can go with 30 by 30, or 20 by 20. It actually all depends on you. So this was method one, and if I hit seven, you can actually see that it, uh, it actually has 26,000 polygons. So this is really polygon heavy, and I would not recommend to doing this unless, unless, of course, you want to do this. Uh, this, is, this looks really good on... Um, on something that's that you know you wanna you wanna close up off. So if you wanna really close up on the grill, this is a really good method because it looks really realistic. But you know you have to pay the price by the number of polygons that we have here. So that this was method one of actually creating the grill. 
Um, let's move forward and go to method 2. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. There we go. And I'm going to hit Z. Okay, so we have our, we have our plain, plain slide again, and we have zero polygons over here. Next method is kind of more complicated, but it really, really comes down to only one or two polygons. So from 26,000 polygons, we jump down to only two polygons, which is a lot. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, the disadvantage with this method is that you cannot close up on the grill too much, otherwise you're going to be gonna be caught with the illusion that we're creating. So we're actually going to use some opacity maps to actually create the grill. And as I said before, you cannot close up on this too much. But of course, if you want to look at it from a distance, it, it really looks cool and it's really fast to render because you only render two polygons, actually. So for, do, for doing this, we're, we're going to be needing Photoshop. And for those guys who don't have Photoshop, you can actually go ahead and download uh, the, uh, the grill patterns that I have in the description down below. I have like five or six of them. So you can go ahead and download that and, you know, you know use it. Or, or if you want to create some of your own, you can you know go ahead and check out some other softwares. Uh, I, I don't actually know how to do this in any other software, so don't ask me that. So yeah, um, I'll be uploading those uh, those those grill patterns in the description down below, so you can go ahead and download that. Or for those of you who have Photoshop, you can download that as well if you're lazy. But uh, in order to do this, what we're going to do is go into Photoshop and it's Control N to create a new document here. And I'm going to be doing something like uh, a really small one, so something like 500, maybe 100 by 100, and hit OK here. Okay, so we have our pattern here, and what we're going to do is go ahead and create, uh, let's say, a, rec a rounded uh, circular grill. So you can actually go ahead and customize this to any style you want, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and click Control R to show my uh, rulers, and I'm going to drag a ruler from the side and you know it will snap to the center of the document and then I'm going to do the same thing for this there we go so we have two two rulers and it's going to tell me the exact center of the document so I'm going to start with this part right here and I'm going to end with something like here so as you can see we created a like a a circle and it's actually exactly one-fourth of the entire document so I'm going to hit control T and uh, to bring up the transformation controls and holding down Alt and Shift, I'm going to lower, lower down the size. What Shift does, it you know, it maintains it as a circle and does not you know make it into an oval or something. And what Alt does is it retains the center, so you you know scale and scale up and down from the center. That was complete nonsense, I guess. So just lower down the size something something here and hit Enter. And I think that's looking pretty cool. Uh, what we need to do next is hold down Alt and make a copy of this thing. Okay, and now this comes the important part. What you want to do, actually, is, you know, by looking at it, you need to you need to place them at the exact same position. And for me, they look pretty cool. Now select both of these and holding down Alt, create two more copies and move them down approximately to where they should be. Okay, and uh, that's looking pretty. Cool. So as you can see now, we have four of these whole of these dots. Now, to do the next step, we need to actually save and rasterize everything up into one single layer. So I'm just going to right-click anywhere here and select all these layers, of course. Right-click, oops, only the four layers here, and right-click and hit Merge Visible. That's going to merge everything up into a single layer called Background. And next thing, we need to go ahead and select the uh, Selection tool. And, you know, just go ahead and select only the bottom portion of this, something like this. And we're going to be adding a filter now. So I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and then go Offset. Increase the horizontal to 50. Whoops. Uh, we need to do negative 50 here. So negative 50. Or not. So I played with it just a bit and I figured out that negative 75 was actually the, the value we're looking for. So make sure you check uh, wrap around and negative 75 here and then hit OK. Then hit Control D to deselect and now we're ready to uh, apply our grill to our 3 d Max uh, our 3 d Max plane, as you call it. So what that does, what that what this does is um, it actually ends right here and then starts up right here. So this is perfectly tileable. And by tileable I mean that you can tile it again and again on the left and right and it won't, won't it won't look you know, tiles. 
Forgive me for that complete nonsense. What I'm going to do is go ahead and go to File, go Save As, and I'm going to go over to my desktop, and let's go ahead and save this as grill underscore pattern. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Uh, yeah, we can do uh, we can do a JPEG here, and then all we need to do is hit Save here, and make sure you go full quality and hit OK. Okay, so now we can close the Photoshop because we don't really need it now. And let's jump into 3 Studio Max. So what I'm going to do is create a plane on the front viewport again as we did the last time. But this time we don't need this many segments. We're just going to lower it down to one by one. Okay, one by one. But we're going to be, you know, go ahead and doing this to zero comma zero. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to hit M to bring up my material editor material editor and on a new material spot I'm going to go ahead and create a VR material. Now you can go ahead and do this with standard materials as well. In fact let's go ahead and do this with standard only. Uh, you can do this with VR of course off also. Okay so we need to go ahead and move down to maps and uh, you want to click on this none next to diffuse color and you want to choose a bitmap here. For some reason my computer is really slow right now. Okay, so you're going to choose bitmap here, and you're going to browse to your desktop and go ahead and select the grid pattern that we have here. Hit open here, and, you know, we're pretty much done now. So we need, we make sure you select show shade map and viewport, and then click and drag it onto your, uh, your plane here. So as you can see, the pattern is being applied, but of course it's not perfect. So what you're going to do is increase the tiling. As you can see, I'm increasing the tiling, and let's go ahead and stick with something like 20... By, let's say 20. Okay, so if you do 20 by 20, you see that these circles actually appear as ovals, and that's not good. So let's go ahead and lower down uh, uh, the size of this. So let's go 20 by, let's say 15, and that makes the circles a lot more circular, maybe something more like 13. Okay, so it actually all depends on the look you're after. Maybe you, you do want those ovals, but in my case, I just want these circles here, so that's looking pretty good. Okay, so what we need to do is go ahead and click this button that says go to parent and then click and drag this from the diffuse color onto the opacity and make sure you make a swap, swap, hit OK. Okay, so no difference uh, whatsoever right now, but uh, if you go ahead and render this out right now, okay, so I rendered it out using V-Ray, you can see that it, it actually is transparent and to prove that, uh, let's go ahead and create, uh, let's say, another plane in the background here, a green one, and let's go ahead and push this back here. Okay, let's go ahead and render this out right now, and you can see that this is this really is transparent. Okay, so as you can see, the plane really is transparent, and looks looks really really cool. Okay, so uh, if you want to change the uh, the kind of holes that we have here, for example, right now we have circles. If you want to change that to hexagons or any other any other thing you can actually go ahead and change this into Photoshop you know instead of circles you can have hexagons and you know just offset the hexagons by negative 75 and you will be good to go but of course I have like two or three uh, uh, patterns already done on the description in the description box so you can go ahead and download those and use it so as you can see this actually took only two polygons as I told you and four vertices and this really is very cool to for for you know for for stuff that they don't use close up. For example, if you close this up really large, um, you actually get the feeling that this isn't 3D but some you know something 2D. And that's the reason I was telling you not to you know focus on this grill too much. If you really want to a grill that that you need focus on, you better start um, you know the with the other method. This method is only recommended to people who want. Uh, no close-up renders. So that was method two. So uh, yeah, those were the three, two, two methods that I used to make my grills. Uh, the first one was if you wanted something uh, of a close-up close of your model, that you should follow method one. Or if you really, you really need a grill for something like, uh, like a phone grill, for example, I had an iPhone model and I used the second method, which was the opacity map in the iPhone model. So we don't really close up on that, that's why I used it. So, you know, just pick your, pick, have your move and, uh, you know, pick whichever grill you want to. 
So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button down below and subscribe to my videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching everyone and uh, have a nice day.